good day. My name is Mallory Raphael. I'm the Research and Environmental Education Officer at BRIEF, the Bahamas Reef Environment Educational Foundation. And it's been our mission for over 27 years to promote the conservation of the Bahamian marine environment that sustains our way of life. So what this means is we're really tied to the oceans as a small island state. And so we rely heavily on our marine ecosystems, especially healthy coral reefs. So this presentation, its original content and research was by the Island School Outreach, CEI, and Isa Karib conducted with funding from NOAA. And today we're going to learn about how parrotfish keep our reefs healthy. We need healthy reefs for coastal protection from storms, for food security, for tourism dollars. So it's very, very important that we respect sustainable fishing and refuse to eat parrotfish. So choose another fish, a species of fish that's not in a closed season. So in the summer, you could eat snapper, grouper. Um, so let's get on with this presentation. So we're going to learn a little bit about how parrotfish keep our reefs healthy, the special adaptations they have, and what features they have and how to identify the most common species we have here in the Bahamas. So right here we have a striped parrotfish, a midnight parrotfish, a queen parrotfish, this is a rainbow parrotfish, and a stoplight parrotfish. First of all, why are they called parrotfish? Well, as you can see from this very silly photograph, <laughs> parrotfish have a beak-shaped mouth, and they use that to scrape things like algae off of the reef. So um, they also have very bright colors, the way birds have bright plumage. What do you think it is that parrotfish eat? Well, they eat algae and they trim the algae on the reefs that may otherwise smother live corals. We need them to eat that algae because corals are very sensitive animals made of tiny polyps that have zooxanthellae, a tiny microscopic algae in their tissues that needs sunlight to survive. So that's how they get 95% of their food. If the algae overgrows the coral, the coral can't breathe, it can't get sunlight, and if you lost 95% of your ability to make food, you would probably starve and then die. So that's why parrotfish are so important. This is a parrotfish scraping algae off the reef. You can really hear it munching and crunching that coral. This is a rainbow parrotfish. So what happens is they're scraping algae off the reef and with each bite, they get a bit of calcium carbonate. So what do you think they poop out? Well, if you said sand, you would be right. They poop out a lot of sand. In fact, one of those large rainbow parrotfish or big stoplight parrotfish can create a thousand pounds of sand a year. That's a ton. So they really help to prevent coastal erosion in our small island states and replenish beaches that tourists and locals can enjoy. So next up is a video with more information on parrotfish and how they protect our coasts. The parrotfish, a sand making machine? Where does sand come from? There are many sources, but the one described in this article might surprise you. It is a fish that grinds coral into fine sand, the parrotfish. Parrotfish live in various tropical waters throughout the world. After swallowing crushed coral, they extract tiny food morsels and then expel the rest in the form of sand. To do its job, the parrotfish uses its powerful beak-like jaws and strong back teeth. 
some species can live as long as 20 years without wearing out their teeth. In some areas, by busily chomping away on dead coral, the parrotfish produces more sand than any other natural sand-making process. Some researchers estimate that a typical parrotfish produces hundreds of pounds or kilograms of sand a year. The parrotfish performs another vital task. As it grazes intensively on dead, algae-coated coral and vegetable material, it also keeps the coral clean. The peculiar diet of parrotfish thus maintains the reef in good condition. Where they and other grazers, herbivores, are absent, the reef quickly gets choked with algae and seaweed. Some suggest that modern reefs would not exist in their present form if it were not for herbivores, explains the book Reef Life. All this activity during the day requires a good rest at night. And here again, parrotfish are unusual. Nighttime is dangerous on the reef, since many predators are at large. Parrotfish usually sleep concealed under a ledge, but such a hiding place will not always protect them from a hungry shark. For additional safety, some parrotfish wrap themselves up for the night. They secrete a protective mucus that envelops them, looking somewhat like a transparent nightgown. Marine scientists believe that this foul-smelling wrapping protects them from predators. The parrotfish is one of the most visible and attractive fish of the reef. Male and female parrotfish often come in a whole palette of vivid colors, which change as they grow to adulthood. But best of all, parrotfish become quite tame in areas where they are not overfished, so they are some of the easiest fish to observe. Getting up close to a parrotfish while watching and listening to it munch on coral is something few explorers of a coral reef will ever forget. And as parrotfish parade their finery, they keep their environment healthy for other reef creatures and us humans to enjoy. The following is supplementary information. Parrotfish facts. Parrotfish, known to scientists as scaridae, are a large family of some 80 different species that frequent coral reefs throughout the tropics. Their name comes from their distinctive mouth that looks somewhat like a parrot's beak. The length of parrotfish ranges from 20 to 40 inches, or 50 to 100 centimeters. End of article. So, as you the can see, fish. sorry about that. Sand making. Sorry about that. Healthy parrotfish populations mean healthier, structurally diverse reefs with more biodiversity of fish, key species like crawfish, grouper, and conch, and healthy corals. We in the Bahamas depend on vibrant reefs for our tourism, our number one industry, as well as coastal protection from storms, a habitat for fish, and providing food and jobs, as well as a possible resource for new medicines. So you can see a lot of different kinds of structure in this reef, and we're gonna talk about that structural diversity in a few more slides. So let's talk about what's so special about parrotfish. Well, they actually change sex. They are hermaphrodites, we call that hermaphroditic. They start off as a juvenile, as a female, and then in the initial phase, their colors start to change, and then they change into a male. And as you can see from the bright colors, the male is the most vibrant and attractive of these species. There are a few other fish that also change sex like this, um, and wrasse are some other ones, some other herbivores. So this is the juvenile phase, the initial phase, and the terminal male phase of the stoplight parrotfish. Later on, we're gonna explore a lot more kinds of parrotfish. So why do you think it is that they change sex? Well, the males have a harem. You can see a rainbow parrotfish here, um, very brightly colored with the more dull green females following it. When that male dies, a female will take its place. They'll turn into a male, and then that male will leave the harem and spawn and age, and he becomes the dominant male while other females grow up in the harem. This is the life cycle of a parrotfish. 
you've got the larvae um, that come from fertilized eggs. It's spawning. They spawn all year round, but mostly in the summer months. And um, about 90 days later, they may end up in uh, the mangroves where they're tiny juveniles and eventually make their way through the seagrass beds back to the coral reef. But it's a dangerous process. Um, so we need to think about a lot of different areas to protect parrotfish because they spend a lot of different time in different areas. So the next up is a great animation detailing the parrotfish life cycle. The basic life cycle of most coral reef fish includes two major phases, demersal and planktonic. The more well-known of these is the demersal phase where the fish lives closely associated with the substrate on a coral reef or in a mangrove bed. Demersal means near to the bottom. This is a school of Caribbean rainbow parrotfish, Scara squacamare. The rainbow parrotfish has a complex life cycle that is accompanied by a series of color changes called polychromatism. Like most other parrotfish species, they are sequential hermaphrodites, which means that they start their life as females and eventually change into males. The female initial phase seen here is usually a plain and dull coloration, while the male terminal phase is often vividly bright with intricate patterns. Most parrotfish species form harems where a single male presides over a group of females. Rainbow parrotfish are pelagic broadcast spawners, which means that they release their eggs and sperm together high into the water column towards the surface and away from the reef. And this helps avoid the many predators that dwell there and would prey upon their newly fertilized eggs. Spawning often occurs during the late afternoon or early evening on an outgoing tide, so the eggs are quickly transported away from the reef and into the relative safety of the open ocean where there are fewer predators. Once out in the open ocean, the newly hatched juvenile parrotfish enter the planktonic phase of their life cycle. Larval parrotfish now become a part of the plankton, which includes a diverse group of organisms living in the surface of the water column, carried by ocean currents, and usually with limited swimming capability. Plankton is a crucial source of food for large marine animals, and is composed of drifting animals, algae, and bacteria. Although many planktonic species are microscopic in size, there are organisms of a wide range of sizes overall. Here we see a larval parrotfish amongst the plankton. When she first hatches, the larva has a yolk sac which provides her with food for the first few days of her life. When her yolk sac is depleted, the larva begins to feed on other plankton that are smaller than herself, such as diatoms, dinoflagellates, and copepods. However, while she is small, the larva is very vulnerable to predation, and larval mortality in this phase is extremely high. Parrotfish larva must avoid everything that is bigger than her, which is a lot of organisms. This includes jellyfish, ketonaths, and larval crabs. The parrotfish larva has good vision and the ability to detect cues from predators, which helps her to survive. The planktonic larval phase of parrotfish and most other reef fish lasts between 30 and 90 days. During this time, they have little but some control over the direction of their movement. They can move between ocean currents that vary with depth, tides, and location. And as their larval phase draws to an end, they begin to search for suitable habitat on which to settle or recruit. The rainbow parrotfish, like many other reef fish, do not settle on the reef straight away. The reef is a very dangerous place for juvenile fish, full of many predators that would make an easy meal of them. Instead, parrotfish larvae settle first in a nursery habitat. For this, they use the mangrove forest. Here she undergoes a rapid transformation, taking on the familiar appearance of a small adult. In amongst the roots of the mangroves, she can find plenty of food, and there are lots of hiding places where she can avoid potential predators, such as juvenile barracuda. Once she has grown larger, the juvenile parrotfish will begin to make her way out of the mangroves towards the coral reef. Along the way, she may utilize the cover of seagrass beds so that she is not exposed to predators, She's still very vulnerable, of course, because she's still quite small. Once she makes it to the reef, our small parrotfish will find a good hiding place. While small, she will spend much of her time taking refuge from the numerous predators that surround her, choosing her moments to carefully leave the shelter and graze on algal turfs. She may also join a group of other herbivores, forming a mixed species school that forage together and achieve the benefits of safety in numbers. 
This also allows them to overwhelm territorial damselfish that are defending their outward gardens. When fully grown, our now male adult parrotfish is much less vulnerable. He is able to graze on his own in relative safety and take time to defend his territory and preside over his own harem of females. He is still vulnerable to the biggest predators, however, and must always watch his back. Eventually, the time will come for the parrotfish to take his own harem, his spawn, and from there, the life cycle begins again. As you can see, the life cycle of a parrotfish, like many other reef fish, is complex. It relies upon the connectivity of many different habitats, from open ocean to mangroves to the reef. Predator-prey interactions are an important influence throughout the life cycle of fish, affecting not only mortality, but also growth and behavior. Therefore, events that take place in the early life stages of fishes are critical to the fluctuations of fish populations in marine environments. Awesome, that was an incredible animation video showing how parrotfish use different areas in different stages of their life. And they're not the only fish or species that do this. Conch and other species can best be protected by having a network of marine protected areas covering mangroves, open ocean, coral reefs, sand flats, and other areas. So do, what does this reef look like to you? Does it look healthy? Does it look diverse? As I said, parrotfish can create healthy reefs. So we've got hard corals here, soft corals, sponges, gorgonians. Um, so if you said this is a healthy reef, then you would be right. And it's got lots of different habitats and places for different creatures to live and hide. There's ledges to hide under for crawfish. There are branching corals that a smaller fish like grass um, can reside in. And if this was a, a photograph without a photographer, there'd probably be a lot more fish as fish are scared by bubbles. So we've got angelfish and chromies and wrasse here, but normally there'd be a lot of grunts and other fish if that's in the Bahamas. So um, do you think there have been many parrotfish or herbivores nearby? So the answer is yes, they helped create this healthy reef. Up next, we have a video of a healthy reef and some parrotfish feeding. This is in Salt Key. So do you think the parrotfish have been here? Yes, they have. You can see lots and lots of herbivores here, including some tangs and healthy elkhorn coral nearby. So that's pretty awesome. So what about this next reef? Have the parrotfish been here? What do you notice about the diversity and species and the diversity and structure of this reef? Well, there's a lot of algae. So if you said, no, there hasn't been many parrotfish there, then you'd probably be right. There's a lot of algae, turf algae, covering all of this dead coral reef. And with just a couple kinds of corals living and being able to survive that parietes, a finger coral there. So no, the parrotfish have not done their job here. And parrotfish have been our grazers since the mid 80s initially before, well before the 1980s, diadema or long-spined urchins were our primary grazers and they would come out and scour the reef at night and eat up all the algae. But unfortunately they developed, they had a pathogen and it killed off almost all of them. So other organizations recently have been trying to build up populations of diadema, but since then parrotfish became our primary grazers. So that's why we really, really need to choose other types of fish to eat we need the parrotfish to keep our reefs healthy because impacts like climate change warm our oceans, bleaching coral, and then the corals are much more susceptible to diseases. So these urchins are eating algae in the turf algal sediment map. Um, and uh, we need parrotfish to help eat algae because even on a dead reef, if the algae is eaten away, you could have a substrate eventually that would be good for new corals to attach. If you get Christus coral and algae covering dead reef, um, you still need parrotfish. So if there were parrotfish here eating all this algae, you might have a new area for uh, after coral spawning for new corals, baby corals to settle and start a new reef. Before you can identify fish, it's good to think about the different features and shapes of the fins and um, 
So to learn how to identify that, we'll just show a few fins on the parrotfish and a lot of other fish. There's a dorsal fin, caudal fin or tail fin, the anal fin, the pelvic fin underneath, and then those pectoral fins just keep swimming, swimming pectoral fins. Um, and these can be different colors and different shapes. Some will have crescent shaped tails, some will have um, different colored fins. So even if you don't know the name of a fish, you could draw a picture of it and uh, make note of the colors after you get out of the water to show it to someone who can help you identify it or you can look it up in a book. So here are some of the most common types of parrotfish we have in the Bahamas. We've got a midnight parrotfish, blue parrotfish, yellow tail, princess, red band, queen, stopped light, striped parrotfish, and rainbow parrotfish, which we saw in that nice video. And then the smallest is this little green blotch parrotfish and a red tail parrotfish. So some of these are more common than others. And in this photo, um, these are all in the terminal male phase, so the adult phase. There's 11 species of parrotfish found in the Caribbean. Um, and now we're gonna talk about the most common ones we see here in the Bahamas. So in the Northwestern Bahamas, the most common are the stoplight parrotfish, queen parrotfish, striped, there's tons and tons of these, and the princess parrotfish. And here you can see a map of the Northwestern Bahamas. Let's learn how to tell them apart now. So our first fish we're gonna go over is the stoplight parrotfish. You can see like little tiny lights on this juvenile and then a red belly in the intermediate or initial phase. Um, that's like a stoplight. And then the colors of a traffic light as an adult male. You've got green, you've got red, and you've got yellow. So that's the stoplight parrotfish. Next up, we have the queen parrotfish. Now the Intermediate phase or the female phase is quite boring. It's just gray with a white wash. We call a big smudge on the of color of wash. Uh, but the adult male phase has a mustache and a beard and a little bit of eye makeup and a crescent shaped tail with some pink in it. So this is the queen parrotfish. The striped parrotfish has black and white stripes. When we see horizontal lines, we call those stripes with the yellow smudge on the nose. The striped parrotfish has blue bordering the ventral and dorsal fin, sorry, the under fin and the caudal fin. You see it outlined in blue. This is gonna be really the indicator of which kind of fish this is. So that's the striped parrotfish. A lot of people get this confused with the princess, which also has black and white horizontal markings, but no yellow on the nose. So we say the princess has no gold, uh, but it does have pink bordering the tail and on the dorsal fin. So princess has no gold, or you can think pretty in pink. Again, it's very similar to the striped. So this is the striped parrotfish with the gold, and this is the princess parrotfish with the, the initial um, having no gold. Next up, we have the rainbow parrotfish which we've already seen. We can see the female or initial phase is just solid green and then it gets very vibrant as an adult um, and is super beautiful orange and green. These are the largest of the parrotfish, so the fish that make it possible to you know, replenish our beaches and a thousand pounds of sand. Um, they can get to almost four feet in length and weigh up to 11 pounds. So they're really huge, that uh, rainbow parrotfish. Just a couple more parrotfish here. This is the blue parrotfish. It has blue in all the phases with a yellow wash on the head as a juvenile. Um, and then a really beautiful iridescent blue as the terminal male, the adult. Um, and the older they get, they can develop this very square shaped snout or nape. Um, so that's the blue parrotfish. That's my favorite of all those parrotfish. So I hope you're paying attention because there is going to be a quiz you can participate in. And uh, this is the red band parrotfish. You can think of it, um, it's quite small actually, um, just eight inches or nine inches or so with a red band around the whole body, like red on the bottom and the top and the tail, but really the red band marking we're talking about is in the adult or male phase, this line or red band under the eye. 
that's the indicator. So that is the smallest of the ones that we're gonna go over today. So if you wanted to stop and take the quiz, um, you could just click on the link in the post to take a multiple choice quiz and we'll see what you've learned. Just click the answer that you think is correct, but read through the options before answering. When you're done with that, let's recap and talk about um, the things that we learned in this parrotfish presentation. So how many phases are there in a parrotfish life cycle? What phases do parrotfish go through? If you said juvenile, initial, and adult, you'd be correct. Why are the parrotfish so important to the reef? Well, as we discussed, they eat algae, so coral can grow and be healthy. So they really, really keep our reefs healthy by eating algae. And if we want to protect our reefs and protect our livelihoods, we need to protect parrotfish. What change does a parrotfish go through? Well, they change sex from female to male. And what's the word for that? They are hermaphrodites or they're hermaphroditic. Where would you find a juvenile parrotfish? Well, you might find them in the mangroves or in seagrass beds or even hiding in the reef itself. Um, but we need to think of protecting all those different areas. So um, different life cycle phases of the fish are protected. Can you describe some parts of a parrotfish body that help us identify it? Well, you've got those bright colors and the beak shaped mouth is the dead giveaway like a bird or a parrot. What about the life cycle of the parrotfish? Well, spawning occurs year round, but it peaks in the summer months. The eggs go into plankton and the larvae travel along with ocean currents for up to 90 days where they might move to mangroves and the juveniles stay hidden in those prop roots. And then when they get a bit bigger, they travel across seagrass beds and make their way out to the coral reef. They hide in the reefs until adulthood and eventually uh, grow into from female to male and they would have um, their own harem at that point. So if you have any questions, you might type your answers in the comments of the post and we will try to uh, answer them for you. For extra credit, uh, what do parrotfish do at night to protect themselves? Do you remember that from the video? They make a mucus cocoon that might taste bad so it helps protect them. So thank you so much for joining us for this parrotfish presentation. Again, original content and research is by the Island School Outreach, CEI, and Isa Karib conducted with funding from NOAA. And here to the right, you can see um, the websites of these organizations along with Brief. We really want to remember that you can help save the reef by not catching or eating parrotfish. You must make sustainable seafood choices. And you can find all kinds of learning materials on our website as well, www.brief.org. So please feel free to follow us, uh, Brief242 on Instagram and Facebook as well. And thank you so much for joining.